Hi, in today's video, we're gonna talk about greasing your bearings using one of these guys right here. It's a little bearing greaser. I'll have a link to this in the description. Uh, so basically, this is a good maintenance thing to do because uh, the bearings from the factory don't have a lot of grease in them. So this is a good thing to do at least once a year, especially if you go through a lot of water. So stay tuned, I'll show you how to do it. All right, let's talk a bit about the tools you're gonna need. So to get off your lugs, you're gonna need yourself a 19 millimeter. I like a breaker bar to get them off and tighten them back up when you're done. Always snug your lugs. I have a little 3 8 inch impact here that I use to get the lugs off. Uh, again, 19 millimeter for that. Then once you get that done, you're gonna need to have a 27 millimeter socket. This is for your castle nut. You're also gonna need a screwdriver, flathead, just to clean stuff off and prying things and whatnot. Um, a pair of needle nose, good medium size ones that are a little more heavy duty are really good to pull out the cotter pin. You're going to need to take your brake caliper off. That is a 15 millimeter wrench. A little blue Loctite is optional. I like to use a little bit of it. Of course, you're gonna need your, your bearing greaser. Some cotter pins to replace the ones that are there. A grease gun of some kind. And then if things go not so well, um, definitely gonna want a hammer and a couple punches. I like using punches like these. This little guy here is usually for nails, but if you have to get that cotter pin out and it gets stuck in there, these are great for that. This one's the same kind of thing. So just smaller end, but pretty stout punches. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention when you use this uh, 27 millimeter for the castle nut, you are going to need some kind of impact. This isn't something you could just grab and you know hammer on it. Mm -mm. Gonna need an impact. I have a pneumatic one. But, you know, there's a lot of, like, the DeWalt ones are, are pretty good. Milwaukee's are great, too. So a nice half-inch good impact would be probably good for that. They make some pretty beefy ones. I would suggest you go with those. Or if you have a pneumatic one, that's fine, too. But you're most likely going to need that. Never heard anybody be getting that off without an impact. So Now, last, uh, of course, you're going to have to have a jack. I've got a little setup here that I wanted to share with you. Um, when I jack the back of this up, it's always a treat. And when I do that, I don't like jacking it up and the suspension gets all wonky on me. So I wanted to do them both at the same time. So I found this uh, two by, what, two by eight piece of wood, old, something I had laying around. Now it is 42 and a half inches wide and about seven and a half inches deep. And again, it's about an inch and a half thick. So I cut that piece over there and then I put two pieces in the middle that are a total of three and a quarter inches high and they're about 14 inches wide. So those are just centered and that way when I lift this whole thing up, both wheels go up as you can see and you get them both up at the same time. Much easier. You can get your stuff off, whatever you have to do. So, but you don't need this. You can just use a jack, jack up in the middle on one side, you know, I'd suggest the middle. But um, that's what you're going to need. So once you get it jacked up, one thing you want to check straight away is to see what condition your bearings are in. It's easy to do that. Just grab your wheel and rock it back and forth and listen. Not good. You'll actually feel it moving. I can feel that moving like it feels like an eighth of an inch. But... Um, not a good thing. So I'm sure I probably need bearings or the last time you did this, you didn't tighten up the castle nut enough. And this is something we're going to check after we're done too. Now, probably the thing that it's going to give you the most trouble is getting this cotter pin out. It's a pain. Now this thing, if it happens to twist a little bit and you can see right in there and the holes misaligned, that could be a problem. So what I usually use is a couple punches. I have a small one right there, and then I have this little bit larger one. So I'll try to get up underneath and pop it upward. Um, first, of course, you bend the bottom ones of the cotter pin down straight, flat as you can get it. I use this for that. And then you pop it up and you're good to go. Um, hammer, always a good thing to have. So you can go ahead and knock that thing up. But before you decide to take this off right here, make sure all the cotter pin, okay, cotter pin pieces are out. There's even a hole right there, so you can get, I've had to go through here once and you know, do some things to the cotter pin. But nonetheless, pull it out. This could be the biggest pain in the butt for you. I did it off camera. Mine wasn't too bad. I had to cut it here and cut it here and 
yank it out, it was a pain in the butt. But it came out. It helps to pull one side out at a time. All right, enough of all that. So you know generally how to do it. You know what's probably going to get you. So let's go ahead and start taking this apart. All right, first let's get this brake off. That's generally how I snug it. Now, it probably doesn't matter, but I like to keep, you know, if this one was the bottom one, I set it aside, make sure it's on the bottom, if this is on the top, and so on. Again, probably doesn't matter, but just a little habit I've always had. It's also a good time to check your brake pads, too. There's not much on these, but I don't know if you can see that. This is probably in need of replacement. I need to get on my maintenance game, but nonetheless, this is the task at hand for today. So, let's get this castle nut off. I pre-loosen this. It takes a little more ugga-duggas to get that off. So, now at this point, what I'll do is I'll turn this around. Put it on. It's always a hoop to do that. Why? Because I'm going to hit this and knock the axle in a little bit. And I don't want to damage my threads. So I'm going to get it about flush-ish. Let's get that a little loose in there. Then I'll take it off. Now, if you already haven't, it's probably a good time to get some rubber gloves on because this is where it starts to get really messy. Another thing that I've done here is got an old t-shirt. Everybody's got those laying around just to set your parts on, keep them clean. Maybe your shop's super clean. Mine's not. So this is what I'm going to do and get a couple rags because you're going to need to wipe all this stuff off. So you can start to pull this guy out. It pulls right out nice and easy. There's a bunch of crap on there, right? So... We're gonna clean all that up. And I also want to go ahead and clean off in this area here. So get a screwdriver, we can clean this off and we'll wipe off your axle a little bit too. It's flopping around. Now there's some grease behind it too. If you wanted to do that, feel free. I probably won't. I'm just gonna clean up the front here. It's probably important to know too that these bearings, even though they're sealed bearings, there's a split right in the middle where they come together. And that's what this tool does, basically. So what we're going to do is after we get this cleaned up, this is the tool. You just slide it in there. The grease will come out here once you pump it in through that zert. And I usually put it in, pump a couple, rotate it, pump a couple, and so on. So this one, this particular model, only has a couple holes in it. There's some other ones that are a little more expensive that have holes on all four corners. That way you can just put it in and pump it and a couple few times and you're done. Totally up to you, but I wanted to try this, see how well it worked. And it works very, very good. Okay, you may not be able to see this really good, but I wiped it out all inside of here. I just lifted up the axle, wiped it out inside and so on. Refrain from using like brake parts cleaner or something on this. Just use a rag, wipe it off. If you get dirt and crap on this spline, wipe it off. Just keep that thing nice and clean. All right, so now that we get this done, it is time to start lubing it. What am I using for grease? Just all-purpose grease, nothing too special. I think it's red. So some of you might say, oh, you have to use waterproof grease, and well, I've just used this all-purpose. So get that in there, it'll fit flush. You'll be able to see the race and the bearing spinning around there a little bit, the inside one that is. So. I'll go ahead and position it here toward the top. Something to note is inside of here, there's the inner race. When you turn this, you don't want that to turn. You wanna kinda of hold that with your thumb. So put some grease in, hold it, and turn it without that one turning. If you have to pull it out all the way and wiggle it out, so be it. Because you wanna get grease in all the different spots. I do all four corners. So we'll do that.
We'll do three pumps. I can hear it. I'll go ahead and rotate it. Lift up the axle a little bit. Put it in the bottom. Two pumps. this side oh yeah at this point she's oozing out which is okay last one here we go all right I just did one pump on that Normally you look around for grease to come out of the edge right there on the where the rubber seal is and that's when you know you did it Seems like a lot of work just for a little bit of greasing doesn't it, but it's worth it especially if you're Going through water a lot and so on because from the factory these don't come out with that much grease in them There's not much at all really so All right So there's that We're done Just wiping everything off even though I'm gonna use it again on the other side doesn't matter so now swipe off all the excess get it nice and clean and this is where we're gonna go back and grab our hub and clean this up there's a couple washers here so pay attention don't lose those hold your finger you can flip it over then you can clean this guy out and I'm going to try to, excuse me, keep all the grease out of those splines inside of there. Because once you insert this in, this part is going to be in there amongst all that grease that you just put in there. But I'm just going to clean all that grease out of there. Looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'd run it. All right, so now putting this on without getting grease on your rotor, that's that's a trick, so be careful with that. All right, let's get her back in there. Might have to grab the axle and just lift it up and kind of just wiggle it around till you get it fit in there. It's got to match up on the splines. There, and then we're in. Now this next step, put the brake caliper back on and then we're gonna work on getting this in. So I'm gonna spread my brake pads apart there a little bit. Get one side started, hopefully. And again, don't get grease on it. Doesn't really help the braking. Get them snug, make sure it fits really nice. I just give them a couple pushes then we're good again don't judge last up now we're gonna go ahead and put these washers back on I'm gonna flip them the other way and then the castle nut take a look at the threads make sure it's good still which it is And actually a little blue Loctite on here probably wouldn't be a terrible idea. That way it stays put. So I'm gonna go get that, put a little bit of blue Loctite in there, and then I'm gonna tighten it up really good. Stay tuned. Okay, washers are in. I let my compressor cycle to get it up to 120 PSI. And time to ugga dugga this in. Good times. Now what I'm doing is I'm just checking to make sure that when she's nice and tight, 
the holes line up. Great. So that's pretty darn tight right there. I don't think we're going to have any troubles with it. And now we've got a hole lined up really good for the cotter pin. Voila. We got a good size one. You won't you don't want a lot of play in this. Get it nice and tight cuz if you have something that's too small, this thing might want to just rock and back itself out and then it gets wedged in there and the next time you do this is kind of a pain. So, keep that in mind. Um so yeah, I've had to put this in sideways like this, which is all right. So now we're just going to bend this up, get it nice and tight. All right. We're good to go. That was good to give it a little check to wiggle it back and forth. You shouldn't have any play in there. So... All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put the tire on. We've got the brakes done. Just double check everything once you're finished up. The brakes are on there, they're nice and tight. Nothing's binding. This is fully seated. This is nice and tight. You've got your cotter pin in there. Everything's great. So go ahead and we can put your wheel back on, lugs, tighten it up. I would suggest you ride it around the yard or something and then come back and then just snug all of your lugs one more time. Uh, really good, you know, not tight enough to snap them off, of course, but tight enough where they're not going to fly off on you going down the road. I don't have the torque specs on those either. Sorry. All right, well, there you have it. It was a pretty easy job. Probably takes you about an hour. You can go ahead and do all four of the wheels. Um, I will throw in one other note, too, that, that that wooden thing I used to jack up the back, that you can't use that in the front. So um, the front, unfortunately, until I come up with something else, you jack it up, of course, in the middle, lift it up. And there you go. So if this was helpful, please go ahead and click that like button. And if you'd like to see more of these videos, feel free to subscribe.